All right. So the last time we learned how to install the Java Development Kit, um, if you didn't have a, or if you already have a Java Development Kit installed, you might have skipped that first lesson. Uh, the second lesson, we're going to go into the very basic thing or basic concepts behind writing programs. Um, we're going to start off. We're going to start using the terminal. So I'm going to go ahead and open my terminal. Go into Applications. Go into my Utilities and open up my terminal. And there we go. We got a nice big terminal now. Very exciting stuff. So when we're in our terminal, uh, we actually can execute commands of the computer. You're probably used to using Windows and moving things around and closing Windows and you know saving files that way. And in the terminal, we mainly interact with the uh, the computer via our keyboard. And we're going to learn a couple of basic commands so that we can start moving around the file system and start building directories and writing some new code. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a folder for this project. I'm going to type mkdir and we'll call this project 01 and I'm going to hit enter and what happens now is I have a folder on the system called project 01. I'm going to go ahead into that folder cd project 01. What this does, cd command says change the directory to project 01. Now you can see over here at the left, it's identifying that I'm on I'm in Project 01. If you're on a Windows machine, you can do these same commands, but you want to open up a command prompt, and the way you do that, you can just go to Start Run CMD. Uh, but on a Mac, you know the commands actually for these few things are actually exactly the same. So right now I've got a folder. I'm in this Project 01. If I type PWD it's going to tell me where I am. So there's a folder on my computer called users and there's my username Timothy R. James and then there's project 01. So I've got a folder now that I can start writing my code in. I can start dealing with uh, the code files and start compiling code. So compiling is actually a pretty important concept here. Uh, compiling is what happens when I take the code that I write and I convert it into a format that the computer can actually read and understand and execute. So comp compilation is this uh, is this program or is this process that I run so that it takes these things the the code that I write the syntax the keywords the things that I'm going to enter into my programs and converts it into instructions to the, the, the processor can read. Uh, with Java, it works a little bit differently. So Java actually compiles code to an intermediate format so that it can be read on any Java virtual machine. Uh, Java virtual machine is just a, a small program that takes the code that you write and is compiled and then translates it directly into the processor. So the idea there is when I write Java programs and I take that compiled code, I can move it around and execute it on different systems that have Java virtual machines. So it's kind of like a layer of abstraction. I've kind of got like a this this kind of translation layer that takes uh, the code that I've compiled and runs it directly on my computer. So. Once we get past that, we can actually start writing some code. I'm going to go ahead and use a text editor. I like nano, so I type in nano, and we're going to call this, we'll go ahead and type nano circle.java. If you're on a PC, uh, you won't, we probably won't have nano installed by default, so you can just type in notepad, circle, uh, notepad space circle.java, uh, or use the text editor of your choice. So I hit nano circle.java, and now I'm in nano, and I uh, I can type in some words, you know, I can just go crazy on the keyboard. All right, here we go. Lots and lots of things in there. Hit enter, you know, do a couple of more things. We can type, could write our life story here. So I'm going to go ahead and kill these. I'm going to, if I hold down control and hit K, that cuts out that line. So we're going to go ahead and start over here. So now I'm in this file, circle.java. So, in order to write Java code, what we need to do is we need a couple of keywords. Keywords are just things that have some meaning to your compiler. So I'm going to type in public, and then I'm going to type in class, and then I'm going to type in circle, and then I'm going to type in a curly brace. It's right to the left or right to the right of your P key. I'm going to hit enter a couple of times. And I'm going to hit another uh, another curly brace. Now I'm going to hold down the control key and hit O. And you can see down at the bottom it's saying, all right, let's write a file. We'll call it circle.java. I hit enter, and we wrote that file. So now I have a file on my file system that contains public class circle, and there's nothing in it except for a couple of curly braces. Now if I exit this, I hit control X, and I'm right back here. If I do an ls, which will list the files in my directory, I see right now I just have circle.java. So circle.java is the file that I've written that has all of my source code in it. And I'm going to go ahead and convert that to a file that Java knows how to read. So I'm going to type in Java C 
circle.java. And if everything is okay, I won't get any response. I get, you know, this nice little uh, prompt that says, all right, we're ready to do the next thing. And if I type ls again to look at my files, I have that new file. I have a circle.class file. So you can see this circle.class, and what that is is just a, the compiled code. It's the, it's the circle uh, that exists in a way that the Java virtual machine knows how to do something with it. So this far, we've actually just written a circle. We haven't done anything. What we're actually doing, let's go ahead and open that file again, nano circle.java. We're writing a class, and a class is a, is a specification for some type of object, some type of thing that we're going to use in our code. So a circle is something that we could represent, and a circle is, probably has a radius, it probably has some other data associated with it, but the class is just a specification that tells us, uh, some, it tells us what this code is going to do. Public means that it can be viewed by anybody. Anybody who's trying to use this can access this class. Class means that it's going to be a class, and circle is the name for this class. So we can actually give this class some, some data. We can give it some, some properties. So I'm going to go ahead and declare a private int radius, and we'll set it equal to zero. And I'm going to go ahead and save this. I'll hold down Control and hit O. Let me see, we wrote that this code. And what I'm doing now is I have private. Private means that this is a variable that the outside world can't access. So people, so a developer could come in and use my cl uh, circle class and you know because it's public, but they couldn't directly access my radius. They couldn't actually get this. Int means that this is just an integer value. So integers go from uh, two to the negative 31st or negative 2 to the 31st power all the way up to 2 to the 31st power minus 1. So that's a lot of numbers, but that's actually a pretty limited range of numbers compared to all of the numbers in the universe, uh, which is infinite. So ints are, are a decent amount of data, but not all the data in the world. So we have a, a private int radius. We've got this much, but we aren't actually doing anything with it. So let's go ahead and define a method. So we call this first variable a a uh, property and we're setting this equal to zero so what this means is we have some place out there in memory that radius represents and right now it's equal to zero so the value zero is in that rate in that memory I'm gonna go ahead and type public in get radius and get radius is going to be a method and what a method is is it's like a tiny little program that does one particular thing now I declared it as public, which means that anybody using my circle can access this method. They can call this little, little, little piece of code. I declared it as an int because that means that that's going to give back an int value. And I gave it a name, get radius. And then I gave it two, uh, or left parent, or two parentheses. Uh, this just says that I'm not actually going to give any information when I call this method. I'm just going to call it and expect to get something back. So I have public int get radius, and I'm going to type in return radius. And what this means, and I'll save that, hit control O, and we'll save that file. And what this does is it creates a method that the outside world can now call on and return this radius value. So now if I'm using a circle and I want to know what the radius is, I can get that very easily. So let's go ahead, we'll write our first program. We're going to write a program right into this circle class. And the first thing we're going to do is type public, and then static, then void main and then string and then two brackets we'll just call this a for now and then a curly brace and another curly brace so we've already talked about public that means anybody from the outside any developer from the outside world using this circle object can call this static we'll touch on later let's let's talk about that one in a later lesson void means that we're not actually going to do anything. We're not going to give a value back. It's just going to run whatever this is, and then it's going to be done. So we won't have a return statement. Main is the name, but main is a special name, which means that this is a Java program. Uh, main has been the name of programs for, for a very long time, even before Java. Uh, string is string uh, array A. So these brackets, these uh, they're the same keys as the curly braces, but you you don't have to hold down shift to, to enter them. The, this represents a group of strings or a group of text. We'll touch on what that means and what that does a little bit later. We're going to go ahead and enter some, enter a value here. We're going to type in system dot out dot print line, and we're going to uh, we'll just 
type in some quotes and we'll say this is my first program in Java and then we're gonna hit a semicolon. These semicolons are important. So uh, anytime you have a compiler, the compiler expects to see things in a certain order, expects to deal with data in a certain way. The, the semicolon basically just tells the processor, hey, or the compiler, hey, this statement's done, we're done. This is one thing we're gonna do and that's the end of it. So system.out.println is just a way that we can send messages to the outside world. And you can see here, this is my first program in Java. So if we were to run this program, we'd just get a message that says, this is my first program in Java. But we want to do a little bit more. We want to write a circle here. So we're going to declare a new circle. Circle, so we'll just call it circle, is equal to new circle. And then we'll type the parentheses and a semicolon. And then we'll type system.out.println the area or the radius of our circle is. So now we have our quotes that says that this is some text we're gonna put we're gonna output. We're gonna type a plus sign and then we're going to type circle.get radius. So now we have system.out.println, so we're going to tell the user another message, and we're going to type that, or we're going to output the radius of our circle is, and then we're going to give it back. So what do you think that's going to be? Let's go ahead and test, and test it out, and we'll see what that, the radius of that circle is going to be. So I'm going to hit Control o to save my program, I'm going to hit Control x to exit, then I'm going to type Java C, circle.java. And everything is okay. We didn't have any problems. That's good. And since this is our first program, we're going to run it. We don't run it like we, we would on a desktop. We don't just double click the file. We type Java, and that runs our Java virtual machine. Circle. Hit enter, and we get two messages. We get this is my first program in Java, and we get the radius of our circle is zero. So uh, we actually we were able to see that the radius here is already set to zero. If we go back into our program, we'll type nano circle dot java again we see we declared this variable equal to zero we didn't actually change it we just left it right there so we have radius now radius is zero when we retrieve that when we create a new circle and we get that radius back it never changed it's still zero so very good let's go ahead and write this out we will exit and we can try it again just to be very excited that we got some output. Hey, there's this is my first program in Java. The radius of our circle is zero. So this should get us through the, the very basics of creating a Java program. We're going to move on in the next lesson and see how we can do some calculations and actually start to do some more useful things. So uh, this time we learned how to compile Java programs, how to run Java programs, how to create our first class, and how to, how to actually get data out of a Java, a Java object or a Java class. So making some good progress the next time around we'll, we'll go a little bit further.